Are y'all glad to be in God's house to worship Him? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him this morning. He's so worthy. We love you, Lord. Lift your voice. Praise Him in your own words from your heart this morning. We love you, Lord. We're here to pour out our praise upon you, Father. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, let's it. Put your hands together.
as the worship team begins to lead us into worship. I'm going to invite our Harvest Family prayer ministers to come. If you need prayer, we love you. We care. We want to believe God with you. I believe God wants to do awesome things in your life today and impact you with his presence. And so as we worship, and if you'd like to just lift your hands, feel free to do that. It's just a sign of surrender. Come on, let's begin to enter into his presence with worship. Father, we honor you. We worship you and glorify you. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Come on, enter into worship. We're here to love him. We're here to worship him. I want to encourage you to press through and worship. Forget about the person next to you. Forget about what's going on around you. And just get your eyes, the eyes of your heart on Jesus this morning. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We love you. We're here to go deeper in your Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's see it. Just love it. Worship Him and magnify Him and exalt Him. Oh, we love you, Jesus. As we worship, you need prayer. Step out and come.
to the Word of God. Shout it with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. Shout never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seen. Turn around and tell somebody it's going to be another bad day for the devil. Turn, if you will, to Matthew chapter 17 and Proverbs chapter 4. Matthew chapter 17, Proverbs chapter 4. We're beginning a brand new series this morning that I'm entitling to Change of Heart. A change of heart. And we're going to get into what that statement means and how that happens. Matthew chapter 17. Six days later, verse 1, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up to a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed. Everybody shout transformed. So that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. I tell you what, that's the reason the disciples were willing to be martyred, willing to be crucified upside down because they knew this was not just another man. And they saw Moses and Elijah appear and began talking with Jesus. And Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful to be here. I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter, in his haste, doesn't, didn't realize you don't put Jesus on the same level as Moses and Elijah and anybody else. He's in his own category. Amen. Yeah. And as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. So I want you to notice that as God's presence came, Jesus' true identity was revealed in God's presence. And they were terrified and they fell face down on the ground. I want you to know we don't serve a weak Mamby Pamby God, we serve an awesome, powerful God. Amen. A God of love and a God of grace. And Jesus touched them and said, don't be afraid. And uh, when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone and they saw only Jesus. I tell you, let us pray, Father, today let us only see Jesus. Amen. Now I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 4 in verse 20. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For God's words, they bring life to those that find them and healing to their whole body. Now look at what he says. Guard your heart above all else. Guard your heart above all else. Why? Because it determines the course of your life. The condition of your heart determines the condition of your life. Out of your heart flows your motives. Why you do what you do, you don't even know what you do. It all comes out of the heart. Remember what Jesus said? Out of the heart proceed these thoughts. Everything can be described. We say, where is this coming from? What's the source of this? It flows out of our heart. We need God to give us a change of heart and help us transform our heart into his heart. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the word of God today. I'm so thankful for your awesome presence in this place, your precious people here to receive from you. I thank you for the anointing that destroys and breaks the yoke. I bind every entrance of the enemy that would hinder God's people from receiving what the Spirit of the Lord says to his church. And we thank you. We give you praise that we're going to walk out of here transformed by your presence. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Let me begin this morning by asking you a question. And just to consider this question, why is it that we have people who have attended church some their whole life, or they come to church all the time, service after 
service after service, and they never, years, and they never change. They never really change. They just come to service after service, and you begin to ask yourself, is it the preacher's fault? Is it the church's fault? Is it, is it uh, the people's fault? Who is it? And here's what I've discovered over the years. I've been preaching uh, 20 years. I know that I don't look that old. Some of you thought I started preaching last week, but I have been preaching and teaching the Word of God for 20 years. And here's, what, here's my observation and my experience, what I've discovered. But I've discovered that when the presence of God is not in a place, or, or the presence of God is not in the teaching, if you will, because you've got to understand, the presence of God is the number one way by which the heart can be changed. Amen. It can only be changed by the presence of God. Now, there are many different elements and facets to how God's presence comes uh, by revelation into the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. Uh, witnessed by His presence. You can be changed by the power of God. You can be changed by intimacy and fellowship uh, with, with God. As you have fellowship with Him, you're changed and transformed. And the point of this, you say, what's your point, Pastor? Because we have to understand and recognize Christianity has nothing to do with conformity. Christianity is all about change. I said Christianity is all about change. Change, changing us uh, into the image of Jesus. The gospel we preach is a gospel of change and transformation. If people are not being changed and transformed, we're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to say it again. If people are not being changed by, by the gospel we preach, we're not preaching the gospel of Jesus. We have to be changing, changing, changing. This is the gospel. It's about transformation. Why? Because, I mean, you know, religious people never change. Never change. What is religion? I want to re re reiterate. I've said this, but I want to reiterate. Religion is the absence of an encounter with God. Religion is the absence. There's no encounter with God. And if you're not changing, and we can all fall into the trap of religion, I've done that myself, that, that we're not being changed because the word religion equals bondage. When we fall under the trap of religion, we fall under bondage. In other words, we're trying to change without God's help. We're trying to find change without the presence of God. Anybody that's a religious person is a person that's in bondage. Why? Because they are trying to serve God out of fear. They're trying to serve God out of manipulation. Or they're trying to serve God out of a place of, of condemnation. Feeling like God's going to uh, sap them if they make a wrong mistake. Listen, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. If you're serving God out of fear, you're serving God the wrong way. God wants you to serve Him out of love. Because he loved us, we love him. Amen. 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 And that's why we love him. And so all of us, <laughs> all of us, some more than others, but we're all under construction. Just turn to somebody besides and tell him, be patient with me. He's still working on it. <laughs> Amen. Amen or only. We're all in the process of change, and we all have certain areas of our life that God is in. Working on us and helping us to change. Even though when you're born again, your spirit man, where the Holy Spirit dwells, is made perfect and righteous. Your outer man is still in process. But you're not going to be able to change until you can begin to locate what areas of your life that need to begin to change. And you can only do that with the help of the Holy Spirit. He's so sweet and loving to lay his fingers on areas of our life that says, let me help you with this. Yes. Yes. Is there anybody in here that you can already locate what areas of your life that you need change? Yes. God, just send the rest of them on to heaven. They're perfect, Lord. Why are they even here? They're perfect. Send them to heaven, Jesus. Let me ask you, how many of you know there's areas of your life that need change? Let me see your hands. You need to be here every Sunday of this series. I need to be here. I've got both hands up and a leg. Amen? I, I, when I point one finger, i got three pointing back at me. But, uh, listen, listen, and here's, 
something we have to realize. There are so many members of our family, of our friends, that they, they have not changed because some of them have not seen the change in me. Because when there's a change in my heart, just like Jesus, when he changed and transformed the real him in the presence of God, his identity came to the surface and, and when that happened, there was change. Everybody wanted to change. Everybody was on their face. Everybody was impacted. And, and when we, we, the change begins to happen, and that's what the Father said, this is my son. You've got to realize there is an identity on the inside of you that you need to begin to, to realize what that identity is as you begin to paint with the paintbrush of God's word on the inside of your heart and on the inside of your mind. That identity will begin to, to surface and the change will begin to happen. Amen. 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 There's no such thing as self-transformation on the spiritual level. Amen. There's no such, no such thing as I can do this myself. I can stop anytime I want. I, I don't need any help. Wait, 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 wait a second. If you can change yourself or save yourself, why do you even need God? Amen. There's no such thing as lasting self-transformation. Why? Well, I just need three steps to be positive. You just be, I just believe have a positive outlook. Now, that's great. We need to be positive. I'm not saying go around like a negative Nancy all the time. Amen. And just be ready to throw poison on everything. I'm not talking. We need to be positive. Positivity will produce a, 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 a surface level change, but it won't produce the lasting change that we need, that where we need to go deep into the roots of who we are and how we know there's only one that can do that. Amen. 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 And we're so blessed. We are so blessed, Harvest family, to be in a church where God's presence is welcome and He is here. I think you need to give God a, a praise. You're so blessed to be in a place where God, God's presence is here. I don't want to live on this earth. I don't want to even try to do ministry without God's presence. I, I refuse to try to do anything without the presence of God. I don't want to come, I don't want to pastor a church where you come in and everything's mechanical. There's no, there's all routine. It's all set and cut and dry. There's no feeling, there's no passion, there's no sense of God's presence. When that happens, there's no change. There's no love. It's all routine and ritual. Why would you want a church that has thousands of people, thousands of people, and a multi-million dollar budget, and you come in and you hear me, and there's no substance to what I'm telling you. You can't even connect or encounter with God for real, and you leave the same way you came in. I say just stay home. What's the point of packing out huge arenas of people in a huge place and no presence? Because the person that goes into a place like that addicted will walk out with the same addiction. The person that walks into that place with bondage and they're discouraged and they're filled with depression and they have no hope, they'll walk out the same way they came. I cannot do it by just uh, man-made steps. I must have the power and the presence of God. Somebody shout it. Amen. What is the presence of God? I want you to write this down on the back side of your hand down. If you're going to have an encounter with God, you ought to know what and who you're going to have an encounter with. Amen. What's the presence of God? For those of you taking notes, the presence of God is the word panim in the Hebrew that literally means face or face to face. The word picture here is an up close personal intimate encounter with the living God. Now under the new covenant of grace, we may not see God physically. He could appear to you physically, but we, uh, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away if I go away. In, in other words, expedient means better. Jesus told the disciples, the believers, it is better for you that I'm not here physically. It is better for you that the Holy Spirit come. In other words, now we can relate to God on a level deeper than this mortal, a limited flesh, that the limitations that my flesh have now, I can see God, I can know Him face to face in the Spirit. Yeah. You are a spirit being created in the image of God. That's why natural things, carnal things cannot satisfy us. 
why we are a spirit being created in God's image. And see, a presence can be even considered or defined as the atmosphere of a person. I sit in their presence. You know when someone's in the room, you know it. And the atmosphere of heaven is the presence of God. The presence of God is within us as believers through the person of the Holy Spirit. But also the presence of God can manifest tangibly in a place. You can sense it. Pastor, do you feel it? Do you sense it? I don't even like the word feel because feel relates to the natural realm. This goes beyond the natural realm. I like the word we sense the presence of God. Why? Because you pick it up with your spirit. It goes deeper than the flesh. And yes, I feel this. Yes, I sense his presence in prayer, in worship, when we gather together. Well, that's what it is. What is it? It's God himself manifesting from the spirit realm into the natural realm of the now where we can experience him and know him face to face. Oh, I tell you, it's about time that you and I as the body of Christ have a face to face experience with God. Where we are impacted by the presence of of God. Don't come to church just to learn about God. You need to come to church to know God Amen. himself. Amen. And when you're in his presence, spiritually speaking, you are face to face with God. Remember I said you're a spirit being that goes deeper than what you can see with just your physical eyes. See, man was made to live in and to carry his presence. You know, that's the place this is the place, God's presence, that you were designed to be in, to live in and to carry his presence. See, before God would ever create something, he would, he would create the environment for it first. Before God created man, he created the environment that he wanted man in. Before he created the fish, he created the oceans and the water that it could exist in and thrive in and survive in. He created that environment, that, that the ingredients within it of that atmosphere, of that environment to sustain it. When it comes to us, man, he breathed into man his breath of life. Eden was the place that man was designed to live in. And somebody said, where would man be without woman? He'd still be in the Garden of Eden because he never would even found a tree. I can't even find my keys half the time. My wife has to find my keys for me. <laughs> but Eden was a place that was perfect. Not, yes, it was a paradise. Yes, there was no sin. But you know what made Eden a paradise? You know what made it perfect? It's because man could walk with God. That's what you, you were created to be in his presence. How do you kill a fish? You don't have to shoot it. What do you do? Take it out of the water. If you remove something from its environment, it will die on its own. What brings death to you? I take you out of God's presence. See, that's why you see Christians, they come to church, but they're dead, they're dry. They never smile, they never laugh, they're not enjoying God, they're not enjoying life. Why? They're out of their waters. They're out of their environment. They're trying to live life and satisfy themselves outside of your environment. That's why when you come into a service where God's presence is, you can be battling discouragement and depression. All these things are coming upon you. But when you sense the manifest presence of God, something on the inside of you lights up and quickens. Why? It's like a fish that's been outside of the water and you put it back in the fish and oh, I can breathe. Enjoy the flight. Enjoy the flight. <laughs> you're more than flesh and bone. You're more. You're not a machine. We were made for love. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? We were made for something deeper than, than just this physical world. Your true identity, it's because when you come into the presence of God, you discover, you get a glimpse of what you were created for. You begin to breathe in your natural environment. The presence of God is the place that you were designed for. You were not designed to try to live life outside of God's presence, outside of His peace. You were made for His glory. Your purpose in life is to be a carrier of the presence of God. Amen. Nothing on this earth can satisfy. Think about this. What is one of Satan's most effective weapons against a believer? What's one of his most effective weapons to keep you out of God's presence? Amen. To keep you out of church or to get you hurt in church or offended in church or, or betrayed by other believers. Why? His, he, he doesn't care. His ultimate desire is to keep you out of a spiritual community where God's presence is. It's just like that fish. Get out of the side of God's presence. And what happens? We start withering from the inside out. He fights your personal prayer life. He, he fights you staying out of God's presence. Why does the enemy fight the ministry of worship in the church? He's looking for a foothold that he can get in. Why? He, he, so he can stop God's presence from manifesting so people's lives can be changed. In God's presence is the only place your heart can be changed. The heart can only be changed. You were made by God. You were made for God. When you stop attempting to try to practice the presence of God in your own life, worshiping Him, living in communion with Him, and striving to live under the shadow of the Almighty, what happens? You start getting stagnated spiritually. You start getting stagnant spiritually and gradually, moment by moment, decision after decision, day after day, you start gradually getting dry, and then all of a sudden, it's because your heart has begun to get hard. What happens? All of a sudden, now we're not in a, in a worshipful attitude, but now what happens? Criticism starts setting in. Come on, can I preach this thing? Criticism sets in, and what happens? I start criticizing the church. I start criticizing spiritual leadership. Why? I'm not praying for them anymore. The enemies move me out of God's presence, and I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I don't agree with this, and we think we know more than everybody. What it is, and our heart has been moved out of the place of God's presence. It all starts when we stop seeking after God's presence. God, you put your hands together and give God a praise. Because the enemy hates me saying this. In my own life, it is only as I strive to live in God's presence day after day. This, this is, I'm going to tell you, this is deeper than feelings. This is deeper than just emotions. I'm not talking, thank God, God touches our emotions and we weep and we cry and we laugh. Thank God for that. But this is something that is deeper than an emotional experience. This is a spiritual experience to spirit experience with the presence of God. And when I try to live outside of God's presence for my life, that it produces death in me. Amen. Just write this down. I want you to work. I'm going to give you a couple of things quickly before we, we finish. Number one, it is impossible for you to live in God's presence without being transformed. It is impossible for you to live in God's presence without being being transformed. When you're striving to live in daily fellowship with God, when you're worshiping God, when you're fighting to keep your children in God's house, listen, if I'm not changing, if there is a disconnect somewhere between me and the presence of God, don't tell me you're dwelling in God's presence and you're not changing. Amen? Amen? Because I can tell you, I'm a witness of it. I'm a witness of it. As we do that, we keep ourselves in a position where we let Him change us. I have to put down my flesh. If you're satisfied with where you are, that's where you'll stay. 
If you're satisfied without the manifestation of God's presence in your life, that's what you'll have. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I'm telling you the truth this morning because I love it. And I want to see you walk into the change that God has for you. I'm not here to give you popcorn candy and a prize. I love you. I want to see God change your heart and change your life. See, look at the group just jot this down. Number two, there's, I said this, but let me reiterate it. There's no such thing as self-transformation. Just get that out of your mind. According to a biblical worldview, oh, I have the power of change. I can change myself. I have the power of positive thinking. I can just use my willpower. Willpower will get you only so far. But it will not, it will only take you so far. What you got to understand is we are fallen, frail human flesh. You know what Paul said in Romans 7? He said, I know that within me, that is in my flesh, there dwelleth no good thing. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible rejects the flesh being able to produce a deeper level change. But what I love about what he did not say, Paul did not say that my spirit has no good thing. In your spirit is where the Holy Spirit dwells. And it is as you focus upon who you are in Christ, where the presence of God resides on the inside of you, as you continue to transform your mind to who you are in Jesus, to the presence of God on the inside of you, that the change will begin to overflow into the natural realm, into your mind, into your relationships, into everything that you do, into your decisions. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we, we have to understand that we have to see who we are in the spirit. In other words, when we get in God's presence, we discover our true identity. That identity of us rises to the surface, and I'm not living out of, out of uh, wrong thoughts about who I am. I'm living out of an accurate biblical picture of who God says I am, and I start to display and reflect that to everywhere I go. Amen. Amen. I, and listen, if I'm just in a dead church and there's no presence of God, you're not going to be able to change. There is no change without, remember what I told you, what religion is. Religion is the absence of a supernatural encounter with God. The, you cannot have change without a supernatural encounter with God. Somebody shout, I want a supernatural encounter. Oh, and here's the thing about a supernatural encounter with God. You know what happens? It leaves you with a real impact. It impacts you. It's like a spiritual explosion on the inside of you. How many of you remember when you had a real, genuine impact with, with Jesus Christ? Let me see your hands. You were impacted by Jesus. A personal, powerful way it impacted your life. We, we, and, and on and on in your Christian life as you... As you continue to encounter God, and He continues to impact you with His presence, you never forget those moments in your life. Why? Because when it happens, you're changed. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. What happens after you're impacted by Jesus? It leaves an imprint on your heart forever. Impacted. I'm not talking about being touched. I'm talking about being impacted. Because Judas was touched, but Judas went to hell. You can be touched by God, but not allow Him to impact you. And to allow you to change, to change you. He became a betrayer. What do you say? When you encounter God's presence, you are impacted. And here's what happened. Number three, when, here's how it's going to happen. You will be impacted by God to the degree that you desire change. Oh, come on. Put your hands together and give God a praise. You will be impacted to the degree that you desire change. Why? What did Jesus say in Matthew 5, 6? It's only those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They will be the ones that will be filled. If you're not hungry for it, if you're not thirsty for it, it's not going to happen. I want you to lift your hands and say, Jesus, change me. Now shout change three times. So to the degree that you're impacted, it's always connected to your desire 
for change. That's why when you come into a service and some people are so impacted and they say, wow, that was powerful, that was awesome. And then there's other people there and they're like, oh, that was okay, it was good. What was it? They had no desire for change. They allowed God maybe to touch them or not even touch them, but they had already made up their mind that they were not going to change. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And others, wow, that was powerful. I was impacted. What was it? My heart was changed. So here's the next step in this progression. When you allow God, you have to allow God to change you. I can teach you, I can lead you, I can give you an opportunity for an encounter with God, but I, I, it's like the old ad, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink. I, we can do everything that we can do, but you have to be the one that says, God, I allow you to change me today. I allow you to take these things out of my life. I allow you to put your fingers on these areas that you're trying to get out of me and move me forward into your will for me. But when you allow God to impact you, you know what rises out of your heart? And there's a heart cry that when you're impacted by God's presence, there's a heart cry that says, God, I, I want to change. I want to change. Jesus, I want to be like you. You remember what Peter did when he saw the miracles? Miracles don't save nobody. Miracles get people's attention. Miracles will get people's attention. But Peter, the miracle, when, the, when Jesus had put the net on the other side and they pulled it up and they'd been fishing all night and they didn't catch anything, and that impacted this fisherman where he said, he got on his knees and he said, Lord, I'm not worthy to be a rock. What was it? He was impacted by the presence of God. And what did he want to do? He wanted to change. Come on, somebody. And that, that, that will be the cry of your heart. You'll say, I can't keep cheating on my wife. I can't keep lying. I can't keep doing that. I have to stop these destructive habits and this secret addiction. I have to get rid of that wife. You may be saying, I've got to stop beating my husband. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> husband, quit beat, beating your wife and talking to her like a yard dog. I can't keep coming to church and being blessed and not give. Amen. I, I need to give. Or a husband needs to say, I can't let my wife be the spiritual leader of my home. I need to man up and be the spiritual leader and be an example of holiness to my kids and my family. Amen. I need to be the spiritual priest. I won't change. I wish somebody would help me today and say, God, I want to change. I want change in my life. What happens when you're impacted by God's presence? You want to be free. You desire change. What is like that fish taking a breath of fresh air for the first time? And what happens in God's presence? You see your identity. You see what God wants you to be. What is it that provokes that in you? What is it that provokes that in you? That's your environment. It's the power and the presence of God. I want to tell you today, Harvest Family, you need to seek after that. You need to chase after that. You need to go after that. Oh, come on. You need to say, God, I want your presence. God, I want you. I want God. I want reality. I don't want to play games. I want you, God. Give God a shout of praise. Stand to your feet with me, if you will. Are you really, really desire some change? Are you really desirous of change? We're going to do something different this morning. I don't want the worship team to come up this morning. But I want you, if you would, guys, go ahead and begin to play some prayer music. I want us to step out from where we are, all of us together as a church family, and find our way across the front of this altar. Now, I, I don't want you. I don't want you. Here, I'm going to give us a few instructions. As you step out, I want you praying for anybody. It's about you and God. I'm glad you care about other people. I'm glad that you are burdened for other people. But right now, we're, we might, we're going to do that in a moment. But I want you, you crying out to God, saying, God, I want to change. I must change. Come on. Let's, let's step on up so people can get through the aisle. Come around to the side if you would. Thank you, guys. Come on, step around here. Are you ready for change? Are you tired? 